Welcome back to this build project where I'm in the process of cleaning the rear brake calipers. I have cleaned the area behind the brake disc, ready for the disc and caliper to go back on. For the first caliper I've taken apart, the pads look good. Everything seems to be in order so I can just rebuild it and get it back on. Next I'll get the flexible brake lines fitted to the hard lines on the car. Now the entire brake system on the car is together. The only thing left to do is to check everything's done up, then fill it with brake fluid. I have ordered the front windscreen install kit so I can finish off the dash. I can start prepping the windscreen and getting the old sealant off. I have also found the weather strips that's run along the edge of the window line and across the top of the car. Unfortunately, there is some damage on the one, so I'm going to try and repair it and clean them up the best I can. It is taking me forever to get the sealant off this windscreen. I believe this is some kind of acetone or thinners. I've just painted it on the remaining sealant around the edge of the window. So hopefully if I leave that on for a bit, it should make it easier to come off. I am still in the process of designing the livery for this car. In order to get a sense of the layout, I need some images at a further distance away from the car. I think I'll drop a couple of the side canopies and see if I can get some photos side on of the car. That should help me out. There's still not a great space to get a good view around the car. But it should help.
I will now focus on the engine bay for a bit. I'm slowly finding the remaining pieces to build the engine back up. I have installed the bracket for the throttle cable. I have rerouted the vacuum line for the brake master cylinder and bolted it to the firewall, making sure it clears everything, including the brake lines and the engine loom. I am now going to see if I have all the breather pipes. I have a feeling I'm missing a couple. I checked the PCV valve when I cleaned the head, so I know it's clean and free of debris. I need to replace these two lines that come from the header tank. One of them's turned into jelly, but they are both corroded. I am still waiting on the adapter for the turbo for the water return line, and I need to replace the water hose that goes back into the head. I am also missing the crank breather pipe that goes into there. I am also checking the pipes on the boost controller. There is a bit of damage on one, so I'm just going to cut that out. I will need to sort everything out once I get the intercooler pipe in and down through under the headlights. As I keep saying, there is so little space in the engine bay, I need to make sure everything's done in the right order. I have all of the extra piping for the oil catch tank, which I'm going to put in that area somewhere, but all that will have to wait until I get the intercooler pipe on this side, which still needs to be welded. I've given the power steering reservoir a clean out so I can get this installed back on the car. this pipe better so I'll have a go at changing the setup slightly. The other hose is good, it just needs to tie out of the way. After a lot of trial and error, I reverted back to the original route, which goes around the dipstick, down under the clip, and up into the pump. I think I'm going to have to sit the reservoir about five or six mil further up, so I have good clearance from the cam cover. When the engine is running, it will be vibrating, and this will be stationary on the chassis, so I need to make sure I didn't have any contact there. I need to make various brackets to hold the pipe work in place, but I'm happy with the minimal kink in that area, and the clearance from this pipe to the clip. That should do for the time being. I have finally received the last piece of the puzzle for the turbo setup. I have this adapter, which hopefully I can use in conjunction with these parts. I will just leave it on loose for now because I may need to adjust the angle of the pipe slightly when I get everything back on the engine. I can now think about getting the intercooler pipe on the turbo side. I should be able to get all the access with just the front bumper off so I can leave the headlight on. see the intercooler pipe protrudes out to the front of the car. Ideally, I want to push it into this joint here as far as I can. The same on the other side, really. This is to allow space for the grill on the front bumper. So 
surprisingly, there is a good amount of clearance around this pipe. The worst area is along the side of the engine around there. Next, I'm going to get the air intake in place just to see what room I have left. The issue I'm suffering with with the air intake is space for one, but most importantly, there's very limited space to get cold air in. I need to have the filter enclosed, mainly because it sits directly under this vent in the bonnet. So without it boxed in, it's gonna get wet. I need to get the front bumper back on to see where the ducts need to come out. And I have the pre-drilled hole for the ram air duct. I also have honeycomb grill that I can try on the front bumper. I think with the intercooler pipes being so close to the bumper, I'm going to have to mount this on the outside. Or at least have it on the outside at the top, then it can tuck in at the bottom. The second intake, which goes on the end of the filter housing, needs to tuck down under the bumper here, and I need to get it to end up there. It will all fit together in the end. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions about this build, you know where to leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and I will see you very soon. For dramatic effect. Right, onwards.